we can look at a more uh, advanced problem where it involves projectile motion and collision. Now in this example here, you can see that the ball is launched at a certain angle. I would say uh, at an angle of a theta for instance. <clears throat> and then it has both the horizontal component of ux and then the vertical component of uy. Uh, here we are making assumptions that there is no air resistance. Um, by saying, by making this statement, we are making assumptions that the horizontal acceleration should be zero, the vertical acceleration should be negative g meter per second squared. The g here can be assumed to be 10 for simplification. So as the ball launch at this angle, it would uh, eventually land at somewhere here. And then the distance from the start until the uh, the first, uh, just before the first bounce is known as the range. So the first questions require us to show that the range is given by uh, 2 ux and uy. Okay. Now after the first rebound, it would land on the plane again for the second time. It will land on the plane on the second time. And then this time the range will be shorter than before due to the coefficient of restitutions to be 0 0.6. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to work around this. <coughs> now first of all, for this question we can um, solely depends on Suvet equation because uh, most of the acceleration is constant. Okay, now to calculate R. R is given by ux t. So where the time t is the time of flight. Now here we don't know how long does it take to actually land on the plane uh, for the second time. So to do that, we need to get another Suvet equation to help us to find out the time. Now the second Suvet equation will be this. Okay, so where the t is the time of flight. Now, as it land on the plane, we know that the displacement, the vertical displacement should be zero. And therefore, we have uh, two solutions here. First of all, t equals zero. The second one would be 2uy over g. So these are the two time of flight. Now, of course, we are interested in uh, 2uy over g. That is the time taken to land on the plane uh, for the first time. Now by taking this value here, we are going to substitute that into uh, this equation number 1. We are going to substitute the result from equation number 2 into number 1. Uh, therefore, the range would be, therefore, the range R would be given as 2uxuy over g. So this has been uh, proven. <coughs> Now, after the first uh, bounce, we are going to further uh, determine the range reached by the second bounce, just before the second bounce. Okay. <coughs> so to do that, uh, let me label this as number one, so it's easier for us to refer to. And then this is number two. Okay. Right. Now, after the first bounce, the uh, ux would remain the same. So the vertical component, vertical component and the, sorry, the horizontal component after the bounce, this is vx. So the vertical component after the bounce uh, would be <coughs> given as the u, y 
multiplied by e. In this case, we have 0.6 uh, uy, whereas the horizontal component of the velocity after the bounce is the same as the horizontal component of the velocity before the bounce, which is ux in this case. <coughs> now, we're going to repeat the same process like what we did for the first question uh, to find the time of flight, the time of flight t1 here. How long does it take to make the uh, to complete the second bound? So in this case we have um, r one is equal to u x t one. Okay, this one will be our third equation. Uh, from here we need our second super equation, which is s y. Uh, in this case, instead of using u, we will be using v gt square here and then assign this to be zero as it land on the surface uh, now we found that the t1 will be the same as 2by over g and then that is uh, the same as 2 times 0.6 uy over g <coughs> And then by um, substitute number four into number three, we'll get the first the first range R one equal to zero point six two ux uy over g, which is the same as zero point six r in this case. <coughs> Now that is number two. All right. Now based on the result that we have obtained from uh, the second section, we can conclude that um, the horizontal distance of the ball travel between n and n plus one bounds is given by so from here we can conclude that rn is actually given by 0 0.6 to the power n r uh, where n is number of bounds number of bounds in this case right. <coughs> okay and then uh, the last question just let me put it here, it's easier. Last one, by uh, looking at this as a sum of a geometric series, yes, indeed it's a geometric series, we can see that uh, the distance, the horizontal distance traveled between uh, the first uh, the first bounce, the second bounce and the third bounce is given by r, 0.6 r, 0.6 square r, and so on and so forth until we have 0 0.6 nr here. Now if we wish to find the total distance traveled uh, by the ball up to 6 bounds, what we are interested to find is actually the sum of the geometric series up to uh, n equal to 6, which is given by this formula here, 1 minus 0 0.6 to the power of 6, divided by 1 minus 0 0.6 here okay so by using your calculator uh, just let me get my GeoGebra and then let me try to <coughs> find out what is this number here okay so we have 1 minus 0 0.6 to the power 6 and then we have uh, V divided by 0 0.4 Therefore, we have 2.38. So here we have 2.38 r as the uh, total horizontal distance traveled by the ball up to six bounds.